Okay, so I just went through this. I'm going to go through it again real quick. Um, we had talked about going into some of the image design, talking about logo colors, fab icons, stuff like that. The primary we need there uh, is the fab icon and the logo. The logo, you know, rectangular shaped, square shaped, doesn't matter too much. It's going to go in the upper left hand corner of our banner. Does not have to take the full width. Um, fab icon obviously is a 32 by 32. Um, a social media preview thing, 640 by 320 or 1280 by 640, uh, something that I'd like to get. So if we post the link to our GitHub page somewhere, then we get a nice, clean, pretty logo instead of whatever GitHub wants to put up there. Um, I wanted to talk about that tonight, but then uh, what I didn't do was I didn't get anybody to give me anything. So kind of hard to share something because I, I don't know what's going to happen here if somebody were to take over sharing. And so having that, if uh, my thinking is along the lines of if you give me a link to where I can get to the stuff, I'll, I'll put a pool together for different things and who got them to me, or you could email it to it. It doesn't matter. Um, and we can go through whatever images you have and collectively as a group talk about it. Uh, maybe in our, let's see, our, this session I was going to hopefully dedicate to SAS. Uh, next session I was going to dedicate to uh, TypeScript. Uh, so I'm probably going to put one on for Saturday or Sunday. So maybe in that Saturday or Sunday, if folks can get me some stuff. That sound okay? That sounds great. Okay. So, so that limits down what we do there on that one. I'll move that to our backlog. And I'm going to bring the SAS one forward because that is what I wanted to cover tonight. Uh, I want to go through SAS a little bit. And uh, the SAS playground is one of the areas I want to spend some time. Um, but I want to start with the actual SAS basics. Um, and there are a couple of folks I'm looking for. And if they show up, I'll, we'll, we may switch gears a little bit. But for now, they're not here. So I want to talk through code that we don't have folks here for. So. We'll push the attendance thing out again. We haven't done it, attendance. Um, all right, so SAS basics. Uh, SASLang.com, what a horrible address, but it works. Um, first thing I want to say is there, there are differences here between SAS and SCSS. The original version of SAS, SASS, that was generated, um was not a superscript of css so you could not write css in a sas file they very quickly figured out that wasn't a good idea and they shifted over to scss which is where the file name extension changed and so actually what we talk about a css today is actually or what we talk about a sas is actually scss just hard to say SCSS over and over again, so it is SAS, okay? So there actually are two different versions, not a big deal. Um, you can actually e execute and pre-compile and this stuff, because that's what SAS is, it's a pre-compiler. It takes our code, it compiles it down to CSS, okay? Um, SAS can take variables, and in our file is just as simple as uh, dollar sign, whatever you want to name it. You can include dashes, which I thought was really strange, but it works. Uh, and it can be a string after it. It can be a hex code after it. It can be, you know, there are lots of different things you could do with variables. I don't use the variables a lot, okay? Um, but then implementation becomes you're just using that dollar sign and that variable name somewhere in your CSS, and it translates it. It puts the pieces together, okay? Main reason... I'm a big fan of SCSS is nesting. Okay, so you take something like this where you've got a nav UL, an LI, an anchor. It turns it into a nav space URL, nav space LI, nav space anchor. Okay, this is what you guys, if you haven't been using SAS, are probably used to writing, right? And it can get challenging to write that. Um, this nesting makes it real clear what's going on. Okay. Um, easy to work with, uh, e easy to write, okay? 
Uh, we have things that are called partials, not going to dig into that too much. Modules, not going to dig into that too much. The modules essentially is a way to include code, to have it in multiple files. All right. For a single individual project, it might have some uses. Uh, for most of what we're going to do with Angular, your SCSS files are already tied to your component. We'll have a global uh, SAS file that gets rebuilt to global CSS. Um, we don't have to do much module import export kind of stuff. Okay, mix-ins are actually really kind of cool. Mix-ins are where you can actually pass it a variable and have it do something based on that variable. Okay. Um, again, I don't use them a lot in day-to-day -day code. Good to know they're there. Good to know you might want to dig into it at some point in time. Okay, if you take a job that's going to require a writing a lot of uh, SAS code, uh, be good to know they exist, right? You can do inher extending and inheritance and all these kind of weird, almost object-oriented kind of things. Uh, we can use SAS math and do operations. Why would we want to do that? Well, it's easier to do it ahead of time pre-compile. A lot of the base calculations we do within our code don't necessarily have to happen on the fly with a calc. Okay. If you can do it ahead of time and you want to just make it an easy transition, have the code do that calculation for you there in the pre-compile. Okay. Again, I use nesting 99% of the time. Okay. Vast majority. Occasionally I'll grab a variable. Okay. So what I really wanted to show you guys, and this is where we get to have some fun, is the playground. Okay, so this is a SAS playground. Um, they have, you know, we can tell it which version of SAS we're using and all of this. And the syntax we're going to be using is that CSS syntax, not SAS syntax. Um, again, like I said earlier, there's a difference. <laughs> uh, the SAS syntax is not backwards compatible. Um, let's see, markup, HTML, right, 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 theming, I don't worry about any of that, that's look and feel, we don't need to log it, okay, so we're not going to actually create a GIF, GIST or anything like that, all right, so, uh, base example that they showed was, let's say we do a navigation, and inside this nav, let's say our background color, We'll just make it silver. We'll keep it simple. Okay, so you're seeing a one-to-one -one translation here. So what happens over time? And can I do a? There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Better. All right. And my preference in here is I'm going to do this. I'm going to nest things in. We'll do it something like this. So in a navigation, you're going to have what? You're going to have an anchor tag, right? And I'm, I want to do CSS. Uh, and so maybe it's the link tag or something like that, right? And let's say our color is green instead of that blue. And with link tags with anchors, in fact, let's make that anchor tag just so it's, I stop having to say link and anchor separately, right? Anchor tags do all kinds of weird stuff, right? You can do hovers. So in here, what I'll do is I'll do an and sign colon hover. And let's say our color shifts to purple on hover. So notice what it's done. That and sign says, hey, put these two directly together without a space. Without the and sign, it's going to put a space in between. That's kind of a cool thing, right? So and if we did something like, say we wanted active, right? So let's say uh, not active. So if it's active, say our background color becomes, I don't know, yellow. I don't know why we would do that. Now, if I'm changing my background color to yellow there, I probably somewhere up here, I'd put something in here where my background color 
was pale blue. Right? I probably had something like this in earlier. But I don't want to override it with the yellow. What I would want to do is something like this. If it's not, if it's active, do this. If it's not active, I'll do this. So instead of an override here, what I'm doing is I'm telling it the on state and the off state separately. Okay. And at some point, some point in time here, this should catch. Oh, I've got an error in it, which is why it's. Uh, and sign and and sign in there. I've got errors in my code, which is why it's not compiling over there. And I don't know what that. There we go. Now I got it straight. Okay, so the and sign says anchor tang dot active, no space. Okay, so active is not a child of anchor tag. It's the same level. Okay, the not active again. It's just saying we don't have the active tag change our background color to pale blue instead of yellow. Th this would be a horrible looking design <laughs> by the time all is said and done. Okay. Um, the difference between SASS SAS and SCSS, what we're writing right here is they drop a lot of the parentheses and things out. It's, it's really easy to write, but you couldn't use any part of that in a real CSS file, okay? Whereas what you see here, at least the navigation background color silver could work. You can write actual CSS in an SCSS file. It still compiles correctly, okay? So, you know, I know it's only been 15 minutes since we started here, but any major questions on this? <coughs> okay. So the vast majority of what we'll be working with in the project is going to be like this. Okay. You absolutely can write your CSS this way. I probably will ask for it to be changed. Okay. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. It will work. Right. I mean, what I've written here is ugly, but viable CSS. I mean, we can test that too, right? We can come out to something like this fiddle. Um, let's see, we'll come out here, we'll grab our CSS out of the playground. I'll drop this in here in the CSS with a, and we'll need some HTML here in a minute. We don't need JavaScript, that's nice. So we'll just drop that in there and we need HTML. And let's kind of drop that down a little bit. So we get some room. And we'll drop that way down there as well. Increase this one. <laughs> there we go. That'll make it easier for you to see, right? And let's put one or two of those in there. And uh, so we can differentiate and see what we're looking at. One, two, three, four. And we'll make two active. Well, it's ugly, but it works, doesn't it? Hover turns purple. We didn't do any cursors or anything like that, but you know, we can see where we have the different pieces we have, right? So we should have, we got to pull that over there a little bit, pull you over so you get straight. How far can I go? Hopefully that bumps. There we go. And then we'll pull this over so we can see everything next to each other. And so our navigation has a background of silver, our anchor tags are color green. Our anchor tag hover is a color purple. Our anchor tag active is a yellow background and apparently paint pale blue doesn't do anything. Let's do light blue. There we go, there's the light blue. So pale blue wasn't a true real color, that's why that failed in the playground. There we go, so now it works. 
Make sense? The ugliest stuff I've ever done there. But anyway. Part of me is going, ooh, put padding in. Oh, put cursors in there to make the pointer. And my brain just doesn't like leaving that stuff looking ugly. But for the demo purposes, I wanted to see how that comes together. Okay. Any questions? Um, yeah. yeah. So that Seismeister site, if we were to write our CSS on the right side, would it kind of <laughs> translate it back to the SCSS? No? Good. Good to know. Now, I don't know what would happen over here because you can come in and say, well, this is, here's the thing. This is valid in an SCSS file. Okay. Okay. So if we came over here and let's delete all this, let's copy this. Well, I don't need to replicate this. Let's paste it over. Oh. Yeah. So what I would have to do is delete this out. Oh, come on, it's not letting me delete that out. There we go. If I try putting it in over here, yeah, I don't even think it's letting me put it in over here. Yeah, can't even type over there. So it's unidirectional, okay? Um, but that would be the problem is this is, technically valid inside an SCSS file. So how would it know what to adjust? But looking at it, it shouldn't be too hard. This is a space anchor tag. So I copy this, paste it inside here, right? I copy this, paste it in there, copy this, paste it in there, copy this. Well, then I'm copy pasting anchor tag with a bunch of stuff after it, which tells me I need some and sides inside the anchor, right? To kind of reverse yeah. engineer that it'll be fun <laughs> it is it's a lot of fun um honestly of the majority of the css tools that i've used with active clients scss sas is probably one of the biggest ones almost every place i've gone uh you might run into less but if you look at the nesting and the way it works less and sas are identical they have different ways of handling functions. They have different ways of handling imports and that kind of stuff. But the core nesting, which is probably the biggest biggest thing you use, um, SAS and LESS are identical that way. You know, right down to using AND signs and that kind of stuff. Okay. Any, right. other, any other questions? No, no hands up or anything. Okay. Trying to see all who else here. All right, so we've got some other folks. Okay, so somebody's reposted the attendance. All right, everybody got the attendance straightened out. We've gone through the vast majority of what we need in SAS. So given that, uh, I am going to take this card. I'm going to move it straight to done. And that'll be marked in our timeline. So why don't we jump into the TypeScript? A little bit because that's one that I know is, has been a little confusion on some of the cards. And just like the SAS Meister, we have a TypeScript, TypeScript playground that actually is really kind of cool. It's the same kind of thing. What does it look like in normal code? What does it look like in compiled code? Okay. And what you realize real quickly is that it's not a lot different. There are there are significant advantages. I'm going to take the code out here, um, and you know if we jump into the docs and learning and this kind of stuff, learning to create your types or your interfaces that's probably the most challenging part of TypeScript. Okay, uh, we can I could spend we could spend weeks on this and not get through everything. All right you probably want to get your basics down, okay? So let's dig through here a little bit and see. Let's see what their basics say. Let's go there first, okay? And everyday JavaScript. So we create a const message and somebody's trying to do message dot to lowercase. Okay, so let's, let's try this. Let's see what happens here, okay? So they're creating a const message. And this is one that happens at times. 
somewhere else in my code and we know with a string you can do a two lowercase, right? And it actually should work. We'll see what they're trying to say here. Okay, so you probably guess if you try and run, we'll get the string only in lowercase, right? This fails with a an exception. I don't see why it would fail with an exception. All right, let's find out. Okay, so we have, it's generated code, which looks pretty identical to what we're currently doing. I don't agree with them that that's gonna fail. And Yeah, it works. That seems kind of strange description. So what did we, what did we say? By assuming we don't know the value of message, we can say results get, okay. So message defined this way, two lowercase should work because it is a string. I don't see why they're saying that that would be a problem. Okay. Um, I can say that's not callable. Yeah, I understand that one. Static type checking, blah, 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 blah. All right, so what does it, let's, let's, you guys can read that, okay? I was going to, I was hoping to be, that would be really helpful, but to me, I'm looking through that and I'm far enough along that most of this would drive me nuts to try and sit and read, okay? Um, So let's look through the list of types and things like that. I think that makes more sense to start there. Okay, so what we're doing at our core level is we're defining our types. Okay, so forget about this two lowercase. What we're doing is we're telling it that this has to be a string. Okay, this is one of our types. We're gonna talk about the types here. So if I had put 12 there, my typing, my, my editor is gonna give me an error. It's going to give me a, a warning because number is not a type string, right? What I put in was a number, not a string. This is where the important of TypeScript is. I would say nine out of 10 problems that I have in my code are caught because of TypeScript. Okay, as a dev, we spell things wrong. We misname things. We make little mistakes when we pass things through from one place to another, right? TypeScript is what saves our butts on that. So it, this has to be a string. So if we build something a little more complex, so let's say, um, we're gonna create an interface and it's gonna be, let's call it a person. Okay, and we don't get much on the right side, do we? Okay, because where TypeScript helps is in the editor, not in the compiled version. So our person is going to have a name. Kind of makes sense, right? Of type string. Okay, and this is semicolon separated. It's just one per line. What else do we have? Um, let's say Twitter handle. Give me a string age. I'm gonna do the really basic ones, which is a number. Okay. So we build a person. And we can create this will be the horrible example here. Bob, who is type person. Now notice, watch the red line. It's gonna to fail to a certain point. Now here I have to do comma separate because what I'm adding is a JavaScript object. This is not a JavaScript object. That's an interface defining the types, the key value types, okay? Now Twitter handle. And my age. Ooh, something like that. 
but they gave me an error there because it's a comma missing. Okay. You can already see how it's helping me not make mistakes, right? But then let's say, let's say we don't know for sure if we know their Twitter handle. We can put a question mark on there. What that means now is this key is optional. So I could come down here and comment that out. And I don't get an error because that was optional. Whereas if I commented out the age, immediately you can see I get the error again. Okay. Oops. Well, what did I do? Okay. Optional it means we can put it in, we don't have to. Now, these could be much more complex than this. What if I wanted something like uh, employment? And let's say our employment is an array. So we're going to make employment an array of jobs, but we haven't defined what jobs is yet. Okay. So we'll just come up here, we'll create another interface. We're going to call it jobs. I'm going to just call it a job. I'm going to go corrupt things here in a second. I, I think I told somebody in one of my chats that interfaces should always be singular, not plural. Because generally, like using an array, it's not going to be an array of jobs. It's going to be an array of job. Of, it's going to be each one of those is going to be a job. So my preference always to make them singular. Okay. So our job would have something like a uh, company. We could have a uh, start date. Look at that. We could put a date type in. And let's say uh, title. You know, things like that, right? But employment's not optional. So immediately as we did that update, now we're going to put something in. And that's enough. An empty array is an array of job, right? Look how complex it is over here. So the TypeScript doesn't do much for the final code. In fact, one of the drawbacks that I've seen in TypeScript is if you really want to write that optimized JavaScript that, I mean, is screaming fast, Doing it through TypeScript is probably the wrong way to go. Okay. Uh, but I would say I almost always will default to TypeScript. I mean, there are very, very, very few cases where I want to go away from TypeScript. It just provides so many helpers along the way. So let's take a little bit to take a little bit of a look through some of the types that we have. So we have string, we have number. You've seen that. Okay. There's no difference between integer and float. It sounds familiar with JavaScript, right? So everything's a number. You have a Boolean type. Okay, so what will we put in here as a Boolean type? Um, let's see. Uh, what would we put in as a Boolean? I don't know. Oh, here we go. What? What's it? Remote. Okay. Now, we don't have any jobs in, so we're not going to get any errors yet. Okay. But the remote Boolean. Um, now, one of the things you can't do when the assumptions you'd want to try to do is like, hey, can I give this a default value? No. Okay. Doesn't work that way. Okay. But let's say for employment here, I put in, okay, so I'm at leading edge. Oh, but uh, I gotta give it a key. Oops. And this is gonna be a new date. And I gotta give it a date, which my is uh, Get loud up there. Oh, well, something like that. Uh, title. Mm 
And it's not going to do anything until I put this remote in. And then all of a sudden, all the errors go away. As soon as we start matching what's up here. Okay, we can do more. Uh, is it possible for whatever reason, let's say a remote could be a Boolean, but maybe it's an object. Weird. Weird. Okay. They could say something like location. Don't know why you would write it this way. What I'm saying is you could or them together. Okay, so a string or undefined. It's one of those that you might run into, right? Uh, but like in this case, I could put true, or I could make this an object that has a location. Oh, both are valid. Okay. For readability, this might be easier to do this. I, mean, I wouldn't normally do this in my code for readability, but so that you guys can see that those are next to each other. Okay. Notice none of that help comes over into our real code. Okay. So let's take a little look through here again. So arrays, you can define array this way as well. So we could have done, my preference is almost always this array this way. Um, just me, but this is the same thing. Okay. Array of jobs. Uh, any, okay, so the global, I can fix anything is, let's say on this job we have uh, notes. I don't know what form notes is gonna come up. Right, let's say it's notes, any, and it's optional. It could be an array of, uh, array of strings, it could be, whatever so array gives us that global catch-all okay but it's also one you want to be careful of now catalan had brought up in the es lint that uh there was a warning on any and i would like to keep the warning on any because i want those little squiggly lines just to kind of pop into your head when you see it in your code okay um there are a few cases where i like to have any in there because things change and one of those is like uh, in your when you get your data from the back end. I know roughly what the shape of that data should look like, but things change over time. And if I put any in, then as I manipulate that data, as I work on that data, I don't get big massive warnings because it's not part of the defined type. Okay. Uh, I don't have to spend as much time modifying the type as I do fixing the code. Okay. In most cases, we prefer to define our interfaces and import and export our interfaces, shift them around as the data moves around. That way we ensure the data comes through correctly. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have. Any, uh, no one posted any type annotations on variables. We've just we've done that a bit. No type annotation needed, blah, blah, blah. Functions, okay, functions. These are fun ones. And so let's take a look at functions a little bit. We'll leave some of that in there. Let's go to all this. Sorry, I didn't increase the font size earlier. We're gonna do that now. I apologize for those of you that are like me and wear glasses. So let's create a function. Um, check, well, check person. And we're gonna pass it a person. Uh, we're gonna pass it a person. Okay, and what are we complaining about? Well, person right now is declared, but its value is never read. Okay, as a type of any other blah, 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 blah. So what do we want to do here? Well, let's see what we have in person. Well, we have employment, and maybe our check is that they're employed, right? So we're going to do, we're going to return. We'll just make a check employment. So we want to see that person dot employment has something in it. Just that. Okay. Okay. So get a complaint on person because it's implicitly a type any. We haven't said that. Now you can just go colon any. 
And boy, that solves a lot of problems. Okay, but we also know we have this person interface that we can key into it. What we don't have is we're not telling it what comes out of the function, which we can do simply by putting a colon here. And we, yes, we can use any, just like we could on the other side. But we know this is going to return a Boolean, right? Okay, so we're typing what comes in and what goes out. Okay, if check employment were only, notice the error that pops up already, console, then this could be of type void. It means nothing comes out. One of the tricks that you'll run into, you're going to make some of your functions async, right? And we just need some magnetic sync there, most likely. There we go. This is an async function, right? Async can have a void type, but it has to be a promise void. Okay. It's an async function, but it doesn't return anything. So the promise is returning the promise, which has to return something, is returning void. It's saying that there is no return on this promise. Okay, which is how your async await then can work directly with promises, okay. Let's take that back just a little bit. I'll leave that in one, I'll leave that. Okay, but here's the cool part, look at our code. It still has the base function, it's taken out the typing on person, it's taken out the typing on the function. Okay, in the final code, it doesn't need that, right? only in the TypeScript and the warnings for us as developers. TypeScript is clearly for devs, okay? Um, yeah, so, you know, we can't check employment on a string. Oh, I don't know why I named my function like that. Let's do this way. Proper naming, right? I like, I like their example which immediately pops up an error because you can't pass a number in because we've already typed it to person. If we had gone the default route, guess what can get through? This is one of the dangers of any. Any makes it easier to manage what's inside of here, but it also removes a lot of protection that you've got in place, okay? So let's, what do we got next? Blah, 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 anonymous function. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what's going on in here. I, I, this is kind of an interesting example. So they've got an array of names. Let's go copy and paste that over. Okay. Kind of curious what they're doing with this one. So that may have my name in there. So there's always a Bob in there somewhere. We're going to drop this in a names for each. Oh, I didn't copy. I know I slept it. There you go. And we have to close it out properly. So what happened here? So we have a names, which is an array of strings that assumed that. Okay, we don't get a warning on that one. I don't know why you do it in some cases and don't in others, but I'm not going to worry about that. We ran it through our typical for each function. We pass that to a function. It's passing in the variable s to each function. So each time through, it should be passing one of those name strings. But here, when we try and console log and we try and shift uppercase, it's saying uppercase doesn't exist on type string. And in this case, it's actually right because guess what? It's not uppercase. Point out where my spelling error was, right? So let's see what else they're talking about here. So yeah, same thing here. The help shifted us through that. I mean, that could easily have been one that got through because if we hadn't had TypeScript in place, that would have been insanely difficult to find, right? Okay. All right, so object types, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, there's a fun one. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna deal with that one yet. Um, 
you're passing in something that's made up of something else, okay? If I were gonna do something like this, if we're passing in an object and it has a first and a last, what does this look like? That looks like an interface, doesn't it? Create a separate standalone interface for whatever you wanna call it, username. Name, first, last, right? Last is optional. Okay. Sometimes I'll define it this way in, in line, knowing I'm going to pull it out later and create an interface for it, because I just want to get the code working with proper typing first. Okay. Very rare I'll leave it in there. Okay. Ah, here's a fun one that occurred on that one. Okay. So look what they're doing here. They've got a function print name. They bring in a first and an optional last name, but they're immediately trying to console log last. Okay. If you wrap a check around it, if object.last is not equal to undefined, console log, this will be allowed through the type check. Because it can it's smart enough to realize you checked for it. You checked for the existence of last. Okay. You can simply use the question mark there as an alternative because this would come out to be uh, undefined and it wouldn't console log it. Okay. So that's one of those that you'll run into. I talked about union types just a little bit. An ID is probably a good example of that because it could be a number, it could be a string. Uh, maybe you allow it to send in a number, your final value is of type string and you do a conversion somewhere along the way, right? Uh, yep, you would really have a problem with two uppercase unless you're checking, okay? If it's of type string, do this, otherwise do this, okay? Uh, is array. Okay, so here they have to use the array as array. They have to check it. Let's see, what have we got in type aliases? Da, 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 da. Type alias, exactly what it is. Name for a type. That looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? It looks like an interface. Only it's a type equals. Okay, they function very similar. There are, are some uses. Usually I stick with interface unless I get really stuck on a problem, okay? Uh, let's see, interfaces, yep, we spent some time talking about interfaces. It's another way to name an object type. Okay. Difference between aliases and type. Interface, extends an interface, type. Extends a type via intersections. So the interface animal, name string, type animal equals name string. Okay, gotta have that type in the equals. Interface bear extends animal. Okay, type bear is animal and honey boolean. This extends says put the two together, so you'd have name and honey. You can do the same thing over here, but you've got to end it together. Okay, so bears get bear, bear get bear. And you should be able to get name and honey off of both of those. Just differences in implementation. The reality is if you, when you reach senior and you have a preference of doing it one way or the other, because you're starting up the whole new project and you're defining what the types are going to look like, you pick the one you want, stick with it, unless you run into real problems, okay? Uh, it's very rare that I have to shift over from that. Um, Uh, here we go. Type cannot be changed after being created. We can add new fields to an interface. Okay, so interface window. Ooh, wow. That makes me nervous even playing with window. Okay. Type assertions. Ah, okay. So type assertions will sometimes come into play. Um, in Angular, you see me put square brackets and round brackets around things in the HTML, right? Don't do tri tri type assertions in there. We will do weird things, okay? In the component TypeScript files, where the components are, where the classes are, this is where sometimes you could do a type assertion. Uh, it, TypeScript will occasionally 
forget what it is you're passing in red. So you're passing a function in and it's saying, hey, I know that this key doesn't exist on the type that you're trying to reference. And in particular, when you're getting elements, okay, when you're getting document elements, doesn't matter how you get it, when you're getting something from the document. Uh, occasionally it's going to pop up and say, hey, there's no value on this. There's no clicked on this. When you tell it it's an HTML element, HT in this case, canvas element, but if you tell it it's an HTML element, then it knows what all properties it should have. Okay. Sometimes it seems to forget and the type assertion helps us clean that up. Okay. Um, here's an odd one. This allows a definition that converts something. Okay, conversion of type string to a type number. He's trying to convert it. Okay. What, and, and the error we get here, let's let's bring this over and see if we can clean it up. I should get an error right away. Conversion of type string to type number may be a mistake because neither type is sufficiently overlaps the other. If it was intentional, convert it to unknown first. Okay. Well, what do we think the problem is? Well, maybe because there's no way to, to coerce that to a number. Okay. Oh, maybe. Nope. Okay. So you got to be a little careful with some of these. Typical things that you would expect in JavaScript don't work. Okay. And I got 10 minutes left, guys. So we're going to Let's see how far through this. Area. Okay, literal types. Don't worry about that. Uh, yet, literal interface. No one undefined. Um, no one undefined can cause problems here and there, but you can do standard null checking and that kind of thing. Um, if you write your code properly, you can do it without having to deal with null and undefined, or at least limit it. Okay. But there's lots of good documentations on what to do with them. Enums, I've found enums to be particularly painful in Angular. So I tend to avoid those in Angular. Um, and then less common primitives. Ooh, symbol. Symbol is a, a primitive that already exists. I've never found a use for it yet. Okay. We do. We'll, we'll see if we can find a use for it. But that's the core to... TypeScript, and if if this isn't enough and we want to spend more time on it next session, we can do that. Any questions on TypeScript? We do have time. I'd be amazed if there are no questions. Yeah, I kind of missed out on the uh, importance or uses of uh, interface sections. Could you elaborate some more, please? Okay, hang on. Either my sound's way up or something weird. Say that again. Okay. I'm guessing it's probably because I'm on my phone. So I I was uh, saying I kind of missed out on uh, the explanation for the interface section. Could oh. you elaborate some more, please? Yeah, yeah. So interface is just we're defining a type, okay? So a type can be a simple type, like your string or your number or your Boolean. It could also, it, it, there are other options in there, but those are the three basic ones that we use. But there are times that we have more complex data types, okay? So in this case, like I have here on the example, person is an interface. Person has uh, a, a person would be an object when it's generated, but it would have a key name of type string, uh, a key Twitter handle, which is optional of type string, optional being defined by the question mark, an age, which is a number, and an employment, which is an array of job. Okay. Um, and use of that type person then becomes something like here where I did const Bob colon person, colon being where I'm telling you what the type is. So the type is that more complex interface type. Um, 
equals and we create an object from there okay and what it does is it enforces what keys and values you're allowed to put on and what those keys and values look like does that help Sure does. Thanks. Okay. The more you play with them, the more they make sense. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. Um, I'm sure you'll have more questions. Um but I think many of those we can handle uh, as we uh, work through our code base as well. Okay, these these will make sense over time. The the SAS will make sense over time. Um, the I'll make sure I get the links to the TypeScript playground, the TypeScript uh, org, the SAS playground and the SAS or the SAS Meister and the SAS or I'll make sure I get those on with the video. Um, so if you didn't get those references tonight, you can pick those up right off the, the YouTube description. Okay. Um, I wish I had a whole lot more time, but I've got like four minutes and I got to get ready for the next chat uh, to figure out who I'm talking to. Um, all right. So we got through a core of TypeScript. We got through that, and I did ask that we get some images together, get the information to me. Now, if you want to stash them someplace like a Dropbox or something like that, give me a link that's shared or Google Drive or whatever, that's fine too. If you want to email them, that's fine. However you get them to me, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll group those by person, uh, and we can chat about those. Um, you know, we should have a color scheme in place, so we can start to put some things together once we decide what we want on uh, once we finalize colors and finalize our logo and themes and that kind of stuff, but our color scheme should be close enough that we can tweak it pretty quickly there. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or concerns before we call it a session? Oh, it's, thank you. All right. Dylan doing good. Doing good. Thank you. Federico, we didn't lose you completely. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. All right. Catalan, doing good. Catalan. Man, I'll get that one of these days. Laura, you're doing awesome. Are we going to lose yeah. you some over the uh, no. Um, no, I start on Tuesday, and okay. I'm sure just to start, there'll be a lot of training and stuff, but mm -hmm. also it's like a flexible working hours kind of thing. So that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. I'll have to adjust that to that. I've never worked yeah. anywhere like that. So, <laughs> well, yeah, but also realize that you're going to be worn out that first couple of weeks. So, oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. <laughs> true. Dro drop and watch this as a video if you like. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's amazing how difficult just setting up a machine is. I do that every two to three years the way I switch clients and right and, and they like um they do their front end and react redux and mm -hmm. typescript so Absolutely. this kind of actually has some good timing for me <laughs> sure sure yeah you got a quick intro to that typescript and there's there's yeah. <laughs> infinitely more to it but um other than edge cases, I think that's the core, how to build an interface. Now, they may use types instead of interfaces, but what goes inside the squiggle brackets is nearly identical between a type and uh, an interface. So there you wouldn't have much trouble shifting one way or the other. Um, awesome. Yeah, enjoy that. And let's see, our next session is Thursday, right? Oh, that's not my calendar. That's my calendar. All right, so I will see you guys then. All right.